Winter creeper was introduced from Asia as an ornamental plant. Unfortunately, it rapidly escapes the garden and outcompetes native plants for light, space, nutrients, and water. Winter creeper can grow really differently depending on its environment. So it can carpet the ground, as you see here. It can grow as a vine up trees, or it can grow kind of like a shrub, especially if it's growing over a downed tree or a fence. When it's growing as a ground covering, it will grow over and outcompete native plants, um, preventing regeneration of the trees that we want to be seeing in our woodlands. When it's growing as a vine, it can grow over small trees, prevent them from having access to light, and decrease their health, eventually killing them. So winter creeper really easily adapts to its environment, and the exact same plant can look really different depending on where and how it's growing. So if it's carpeting the forest floor, um, you're going to see it growing like this. Uh, it has leaves that are opposite, a shiny green color, these white veins running the length of the leaf. If it's growing up a tree as a vine, uh, those leaves might look a little different. Um, here you can see a vine that I pulled off of a tree, and it has a slightly different form. Uh, no matter what though, those leaves are going to be opposite from each other, oblong, shiny, dark green color on top, a lighter green underneath. The margins of the leaves of winter creeper are finely serrated, and in this one you can see it's been growing as a vine up a tree. Those leaves are quite large and broad. Um, when it's growing as a ground covering, those leaves are going to be smaller and darker. Uh, either way, those leaves are uh, kind of thick and have a waxy cuticle on the outside. Winter creeper only flowers when it's growing as a vine. It flowers in the summer in June or July typically, and those will develop into fruits that will kind of burst open uh, into a fleshy, uh, orange, fleshy covered seed. It's a popular ornamental plant where it can be contained uh, to some extent. Uh, it only produces berries and fruit when it's growing upward as a vine. So if it's not growing as a vine in those settings, it can locally take over, but it's unlikely to spread to new areas. Now, birds eat those berries. They will carry them far and wide. So even those plants in the landscape setting can have a big impact on what happens in your woodlands. Uh, how widely distributed the winter creeper is, how much cover there is, if it's a small area or whether it's a large area. And depending on those factors uh, will help you determine the best management strategy. Uh, if it's a small area, oftentimes we can pull individual plants uh, to pull up the entire plant, including the root system. If hand pulling isn't necessarily an option because it's so widespread, uh, cutting may be your best option to prevent winter creeper from spreading even further. Uh, it's important to cut the stem before it fruits, which typically occurs in late summer uh, and early fall. Oftentimes, uh, chemical application is, uh, is necessary uh, to prevent winter creeper from re-sprouting after you uh, cut off the stem. When we are dealing with large areas or small areas of something like winter creeper, and we feel that herbicide application would be an important part of a management strategy, typically when we're thinking of herbicides, it's not a one shot deal. It takes a sustained effort and it's going to be part of an overall strategy. That's when we're going to get the best results. So we may be using mechanical removal as part of it to get it down to a reasonable level dealing with small patches. If we have an extensive you know, um, infestation like we have here at the Arboretum, then yes, herbicide application would very well be an uh, important part of our strategy. The key for herbicide application is we want to get selective control. We don't want to wipe out everything. We don't want to damage our trees. We don't want to damage our understory. We just want to get 
the, herb, the, the, the winter creeper. We want to get it managed to a reasonable level. We may not be able to eradicate it, but we want to keep it managed so then we can then have it, it might be part of the landscape, but of course then it can coexist with the other organisms here that we're trying to promote. So there are a number of options with herbicides. Typically, we would want to be using herbicides that do not have soil activity after application because then that would very well damage plants other than our winter creeper. So we'll be looking then typically then at foliar application, but we want to get selective control. We can apply something foliar at this time of year, but that would be a mistake because we would then wipe out everything. We don't want that. We have options and the best way to do this is by the timing of our application. Winter creeper is a major issue because it stays green year round. Our other organisms like our trees and that have periods of time when there are no leaves. So after leaf fall, we can be applying things to the winter creeper, that's the only thing that's green here, it's not going to injure our trees. So with that timing, we have windows where we can do this. We've done research where we've been applying you know, selective herbicides in the off season, in winter time, things are, you know, everything's growing more slowly, symptoms are going to take more lo longer to appear, but we get, in the end, we get good results and we get selectivity. We may need to reapply, but we have the selectivity. So then we can then do this without harming our other vegetation, which is a key. So thanks for joining us today and learning more about the invasive plant winter creeper. Good luck in your management and if you want to learn more, visit our website and check out our fact sheets.